Um, we haven't got long to go, so we're going to try a bit of quick fire. And uh, Christian's favourite footballer on earth is Jack Grealish, and he's going to tell us why. <laughs> <laughs> well, watching Jack play was one of the absolute pleasures of my lifetime. When we were kids, do you remember the Ready Breck advert? When the mm. footballer with the red glow around him, that's what it was like watching Jack when I got to Aston Villa. Like a lot of people who weren't from Birmingham, he'd passed me by until then. He was a 19 grand a week superstar and um, watching him was one of the pleasures of my life. I saw Aiden Hazard in his pomp. I saw Steven Gerrard, mm. Fernando Torres in their pomp. He was at that, a generational talent and um, I'm proud. He's gone on to have a brilliant career with England and Man City. I miss the player he was at Aston Villa. Um, give him the ball, beat five players, assist, goal, foul. A little bit different at Manchester City. You think City. he's slightly stifled at Manchester City? I think he's very stifled because I'm sure, the, I'm not an expert on, you know, on, on. I'm sure Pep sees him as a much better footballer today and he probably is. But the way he played for Villa, which was basically give him the ball and watch the magic. Every single opposing fan knows what I'm referring to, let alone mm. Villa fan. It was incredible. And, you know, receive, give, pass quickly is not the Jack Grealish we all grew to love. And But I'm thrilled. I'm thrilled for him. He's won a lot of trophies. He's had the profile. He's an England He's an England player now. But, um, God, I look back on those days in the Championship when he, um, when he, um, he was unplayable. He mm. seems a genuine guy as well. He's the nicest kid I've met in football. Often people aren't as they appear in public and private. He is 100% completely authentic and natural. Right. Uh, quickly, money for the EFL. When are they going to get it? I don't know the answer to that question. I thought they were going to get it a year ago when I was still in the room. Uh, I think we need to break the impasse, um, meaning I don't think any... I think if, if any people sitting on either side of that deal think that government or a new government have any appetite to sort out financial disputes between the Premier League and the EFL, they're wrong. Politicians are smart enough to know they don't want to be anywhere near the money issues, meaning Premier League and the EFL need to sort it. And in my opinion, the real beauty of the deal that's on the table is the Premier League and the EFL are going to do the media together because the Premier League are very good at it. The Championship have constantly undersold their TV rights. Having that under one management team in the Premier League is good. And in the long run, let's be frank about it, asking one set of billionaires in the Premier League to bail out billionaires in the Championship, that's not sustainable, that's charity. We need to grow the revenues of football in total and help the Championship in that cliff edge between the two divisions. Manchester United, can you have a co-ownership between the Glazers and Ratcliffe? Well, in my old life, in the, in, the, in the financial world, I have to say the idea that a minority owner of any private company can have full control over the checkbook is a nonsense. And so none of us know the conversations that have happened between uh, Sir Jim and the Glazers around how it's actually going to work. But if on January the 1st next year, you know, Jim's team and Sir Dave Brailsford and very good management team, I'm certain they'll appoint turn up with a £150 million striker and 75% of that cheque's got to be paid for by the Glazers, how's that conversation going to go? Uh, it doesn't seem to me to be a particularly stable ownership structure. I'm encouraged. Um, it's def You feel something in the air. There's an optimism again. But the practicalities of making that ownership structure work in any normal private business would be extremely difficult. I think it's a I think it's a sprat to catch a mackerel. I think in the end he'll have to take the whole club. You talked quite a bit earlier on about debt and the, the model Man United is. It, 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 to football fans, it feels absolutely wrong that you load a club up with debt. You don't care about it. You just keep loading it up because the club is worth so much more that the debt doesn't matter. Well, it's a really nice way to end because the very start of this, you you asked me about a subject I hadn't talked about for fifteen years. Um, I went to Liverpool actually because I thought I, I was a specialist in the business of buying companies in the private equity industry using borrowed money. That's why they trusted me at RBS. They knew the truth is it's immoral to load up a football club with debt to enable somebody to buy it without their own money. It's plain wrong. And I went to Liverpool to get rid of that debt because I don't believe in it. And the same was true of the Glazers takeover. Mm. Um, you know, they put virtually nothing in to buy that club. They've just had a... Effectively, the club's just been valued at £5 billion for something that cost them virtually nothing, so it's an almost infinite profit. And thank goodness, um, the penchant for borrowing clubs with huge amounts, of buying clubs with borrowed money, has definitely waned in the last few years. You obviously know the executive world, you know football. How long will Ashworth be on gardening leave for? 
look, I think probably if... Um, I certainly think it's going to cost Manchester United if they want to get Dan early because, A, that's what the contract allows for and, B, Newcastle, I'm sure, if we believe what Eddie said, you know, are in the market for profits and they need to pay for a replacement. So I guess the real question here is, do I think an agreement will be reached that get him gets him there earlier? On balance, yes, I do. Um but it'll take a bit of time. The similar, the boot was on the other foot when Dan left Brighton to Newcastle, and in the end, a deal was done. But if I was a betting man, it won't be until after the summer window. If you think about it, he's sitting on a whole bunch of intelligence that's directly relevant in three months' time, so maybe a September move makes more sense for both parties.